Uh, I'm Keenan Robinson. I'm the Director of Sports Medicine and Science for USA Swimming. And uh, obviously our partnership is a national governing body, USA Swimming with the USOC. Uh, uh, we work very, very closely with uh, USOC Sports Medicine staff. And when Dr. Moreau had passed along the information that this, this clinic was going to be going on, it was, a, it was a slam dunk. When I looked at the speaker list and the, the depth and breadth of topics being covered here, it's, 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 it was a no-brainer to come, to just come up the hill for this. Uh, when you think of the presenters, Dr. Moreau and Dr. Philippon, just to hear those two speak on things that they're experts in the field on, it's just, you can't put a price on that. And then you look at, you know, the fact that Dr. Ch Chad Pressmack was going to be talking about the neurological aspect and the neurological rehabilitation aspect of concussions. And to me, in a sport like swimming, you don't think that, that concussions occur, but they do in fact, do, they do occur. And I think one of the things that we take away is that it's no longer a, a, an injury that we just sit and, and let it heal. We actually can rehabilitate. And I think to be able to get some of that information out is gonna be very, very beneficial to our practitioners and most importantly, our athletes and our coaches. Um, I think, I think the, the big things are when we talked about um, we will kind of talk about the sections yesterday. When we talk about the concussion, I think it's, like I, I mentioned, the, the importance that um, we have to do a better job of identifying what is our baseline neurocognitive status of our, of our swimmers. And the message I want to get out to, primarily to our universities, our secondary schools would be great, but to our universities, start, start with the low-hanging fruit first, is be conscientious and aware of doing great baseline testing because you don't know when that injury is going to occur and we don't want to get into a situation we have what the NHL has gone through or the NFL has gone through where we have an epidemic of former athletes coming back and saying you guys did nothing for us and so number one identifying what the what our neurocognitive baseline status is of swimmers and for swimmers in particular I think that was coming becoming very, very prominent and more and more of the speakers that went through the concussion section is that there's differences between men and women. There's differences between high school athletes, collegiate athletes, and professional athletes. There's difference between contact, contact combat athletes and, and non-contact combat athletes. And so I, I, would, I was quickly doing a PubMed search and there's, there's nothing on, on the aquatic athlete. And so I think, um, Number one, let's 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 start that so we so we have the the benefit of it. And then when you think of again, then when you think of the hips, it's it's let's let's think about um, the ability to identify them at a younger age. You know, it looked at, like with uh, many of the football or soccer, I guess as we call it in this country, in the, in the pee wee hockey, identifying them at an earlier age will help identify those risk factors, and then potentially we can we can make an uh, an impact with them. And I think the last presenter was great. Wasn't it common sense medicine? How many of these things could have been prevented with just a Band-Aid and some Neosporin? And, and uh, obviously sports analytics and, and medical informatics, all these things are great and important and they need to be done, but let's not lose, like, uh, let's not lose sight of what's, what's important. And that's common sense and things that are easily preventable. No, it's, it's funny, go to any, any swim meet, um, that involves more than two teams, and you'll see why. There's probably 30 swimmers to a lane, swimming up and down. If you go international, it's just like driving. They don't circle swim the way we do in the United States. So you have uh, the, the swimmers from the Asian countries pushing off into the Americans and the Europeans in the same lane, and so that's usually when it happens. Or kids just not paying attention when they're doing the backstroke and counting their strokes from the flags into the wall and colliding. Um, or in the butterfly stroke, because there's too many, the, the lanes are too narrow, and uh, uh, that one swimming butterfly, so they come across, and it's that hand-to-head -head combat. So on one end we have an orthopedic uh, fifth fracture we have to replace, and then on the other one we have a neurocognitive issue we have to treat. Yeah, and that was that was uh, probably one of the the, uh, the great things is when they asked me to present on on hips because since September we've seen four hip issues in some of our top swimmers, and so to be able to come up here and present in front of Dr. Philippon and all of his colleagues, it was more for me to say this is what we're dealing with. What are some ideas you guys think? What are we missing? And so. When you look at the, the clinical exam, it replicates what the frog kick is, but none of the swimmers we've seen have been breaststrokers or IMers, which involves the breaststroke. Um, so I think what we're seeing is 
Like, you can't replace how God made you or Allah or whoever you believe in, right? Like, so if they, if they have these deformities or these abnormal hips, then, then no matter what you do, they just won't be able to get into that position. You're just putting them at a risk and, uh, to get hurt. And then when you look at um, the presentation of how some of these uh, younger hockey coaches are, are trying to still do the quick speed, and, and I think that's some of the things that we're doing in the sport of swimming too, is we just pushing the envelope too quickly at uh, these kids' age without any sort of adaptation or tissue healing. So, so those two ones, right, and, and, and they're, they're funny, so we, we have a, a, a pretty large concussion task force now. We, we started it about two years ago, and um, we're, we're thankful that, that one of our former uh, sports medicine chair was Scott Rodeo, the team physician for the, the New York Giants. And uh, so he had gone through all, he'd sat in so many court, you know, and, and he said, it's great that you guys are starting this initiative. And when we started to look into um, just report of occurrence and insurance claims, they were happening more frequently than we than we thought, and then we 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 had to start survey first, and so we we surveyed coaches, all 18,000 registered uh, club coaches. It's just like what is their knowledge base to it, and we found out that they don't. They're still calling it a uh, um, a bell rung, and they're still just saying, well, I mean, we we had more responses that that well because we're not a contact I understand they hit their head on the wall and they were having some dizziness but we felt like it wasn't going to happen again so the second impact because that's what they hear on ESPN or the news and so they're putting them back in so we've done a really good job of creating a coach education curriculum and then we surveyed um, all NC2A uh, swimming institutions if they do they have a do they have a concussion protocol and do they have a return to swim concussion protocol and so it's really helped us map out a, a kind of uh, a program for that.